Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at Unicorn Scan. Now, Unicorn Scan is a port scanning and fingerprinting tool that is very, very similar to Nmap. And the question that might be on your mind if you've never heard of Unicorn Scan is why exactly would I need to know or want to use it? And uh, that is what I'm going to be explaining right now. So why would you use Unicorn Scan instead of Nmap? Well, Nmap is not very good in OS detection. Uh, and Nmap, again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is an extremely heavy uh, scanner on the network in the sense that uh, the network overhead uh, when using Nmap is extremely high. So it really isn't good in terms of keeping yourself anonymous on the network because you can pretty much trace back, uh, you know, packets and scans to the attacker on the network. Now, of course, that is something that not a lot of people think about, but it is qu uh, quite important to uh, most of the network penetration testers out there. Now, of course, when we talk about uh, the OS detection and stuff like that, I'll get to that with a uh, unicorn scan in the sense, you know, that it has modules uh, that can expand uh, or extend the functionality. But uh, when we talk about unicorn scan, it has two ways of essentially using it. You can use it through your terminal uh, or it also has a front end uh, user interface that is powered by Post the PostgreSQL database. So uh, that's just for, you, for those of you who are interested in using it uh, with the front end uh, interface. In, my, in, in this video, we're going to be using uh, the terminal or the command line interface. All right. Now, the interesting features of Unicorn Scan uh, are the fact that it has a synchronous stateless TCP and UDP scanning. Uh, you also have uh, your banner grabbing with TCP. You have your active and passive uh, OS and application identification. Uh, you can you can log files in PCAP files. Uh, you can save files. You can you also have your relational database output. That is something that you have with the front end uh, and the fact that it uses a PostgreSQL database. And we're going to be talking about that uh, probably in another video if I do ever cover the front end uh, of this tool. All right, so let's get started. Now, by default, it comes pre-installed with Kali Linux, uh, Parrot OS, and any other penetration testing distribution that I know of, uh, with the exception of um, Backbox Linux, uh, if, I'm, if I'm saying that correctly. Uh, I did not find this tool installed, but it can be easily installed uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the Aptitude Package Manager. That being said, let's get started. So the syntax is very simple. You have Unicorn Scan. And uh, we can open up the help menu, which is always helpful in this case. So, uh, sorry, help, uh, not helpful. Uh, so help, and there we are. So we're going to be taking a look at uh, quite a few of these commands. The first thing we're going to take a look at the, is the interface, all right? Uh, now, the interface is something that, again, Nmap does not allow you to specify. And in the case of Unicorn Scan, it allows you to specify the interface name that you want to use uh, for performing your scan. So, for example, if you had an Ethernet adapter, and a wireless adapter. You can specify what adapter you want to use to perform the scan. All right, now that may seem like a very, very uh, trivial, uh, it, it may seem like a very, very small uh, feature or something that's not very important, but trust me, uh, in terms of convenience, this is very, very important. All right, you then have uh, your V command, which is uh, your verbose, which is again, pretty standard and comes with Nmap as well. It allows you to verbose your output so you can get a, a clearer picture of what's going on with the scan. Uh, talking about output and uh, and and essentially give giving you more output in regards to what's going on with the scan you have the capital i command right over here which is uh, uh, which stands for immediate and essentially immediate mode allows you to display things or data as 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 it's being found so for example if you're performing a scan whatever's uh, being found during the scan is going to be displayed also something that uh, you you'll find yourself using if you do if you do choose to use uh, unicorn scan all right, uh, you then have your small m or your lowercase m uh, option right over here, which is your mode. And this allows you to specify your scan mode. So for example, you have your TCP or UDP scan. We'll uh, look at the arguments that you can use to specify the scan. Uh, you then have your uh, uh, you then have your, your your T command, which again allows you to specify. I'll, I'll show you this right now. You, well, when you're talking about uh, essentially scanning for TCP with the uh, the M command in conjunction with the M command, you have T for TCP and U for UDP. All right. So in terms of performing a simple uh, TCP SYN scan, I'll show you how to do that right now. And finally, before we actually exit uh, from the help menu. Uh, we're going to be looking at a few others, uh, one of them being the log file, which essentially allows you to save uh, all your results or uh, all, all of the data that is being uh, that is being retrieved from the scan into a file. And as you can see, that is not on the terminal. 
Uh, and finally, you have your R command, your lowercase R command, which allows you to specify the packets per second, uh, therefore increasing the speed of your scan, something very, very important. All right, that being said, uh, let's not waste any more time and uh, let's get started. So performing a simple TCP SYN scan is extremely simple as it is with Nmap. So you have your Unicorn scan and uh, you, you need not specify any options. You just need to specify uh, the IP uh, that you want to scan. And this is going to scan all the ports. Now, of course, you can use the verbose output right over here to give you a bit of uh, an idea of what's going on. And we can also use the I command for the immediate mode. And then we simply type in the IP address. Uh, I'm going to be targeting one of my Windows computers running on my local network. So I'm just going to hit enter. And there we are. We are essentially going through all the ports and it's going to give me all the ports that are currently open. And uh, this is essentially uh, giving us a verbose output in regards to the ports that are being scanned. So you can go ahead and uh, take a look at all the ports that are being scanned on the target. And uh, then because we haven't specified uh, an interface, it's going to use the interface that's that's currently active, which is Ethernet zero uh, or the interface that currently has an Internet connection. Uh, so it's going to give you uh, a summary of your scan. So scanning total hosts, uh, scanning ports of to with the total hosts right over here and the total amount of packets. Uh, and the scan and it gives you uh, a, uh, essentially an estimate of how long the scan will take. It gives you the ports that it was able to find. So you have your port 445. Uh, so you have your uh, port 135, 139, etc. So it gives you the services. So you have EP map, which I'll, I'll explain probably in some in later videos when I want to cover protocol specific services. Uh, you then have your NetBIOS port, which is standard for Windows and you have your Microsoft DS, which is running always on port. 445. All right, so that is a very, very good uh, summary of what it was able to get right over here. So you can uh, go ahead and take a look at the information it does give you with the two commands and you can experiment with the verbose and the immediate output. The immediate output is more or less just displaying what is being uh, what has been gotten by the scanner and displaying it to you so that you can track the progress of the scan. All right, so that is how to perform a simple TCP SYN scan. Uh, SYN scan. And if you know about uh, the uh, the three-way handshake, uh, if a port is open, it will respond with a SYN ACK uh, response. And that's how the, your scanner knows that the port is open. All right, now when we talk about protocol-specific scanning, we can just clear this out. And uh, this is where we use the, uh, the M command, all right? So I can say unicorn scan, all right? So I'll just say right over here, unicorn scan. And uh, I can then specify, you know, to verbose the output. And uh, also I want to have a, a immediate mode activated. I then need to specify the uh, the mode. And then remember, if you're scanning uh, TCP ports, you then you need to use your capital T. Uh, if you're scanning UDP ports, you then need to use your, your capital U. And then you specify your target 192.168.1.102. Uh, now, if you do want to scan an entire network range for the options that you're specifying, which is going to take a while given uh, the uh, the size of your network. Uh, of course, you, you know how to specify your network range. In my case, it's a very, very small or medium sized network. So I'll use the abbreviation 24. You know, it goes up to 255. So that is the appropriate abbreviation. For those of you familiar with uh, networking and uh, the IP ranges, uh, the appropriate IP ranges uh, and the size of networks. So this will take a long time and that's where we have your packets per second. But for now, let's stick to the example that I wanted to use. So this is essentially going to scan for all TCP ports on the target, which we've already done uh, with the Synax scan, whether we, we, we know it or not. I'll also be showing you how to specify uh, the port or uh, any particular port uh, that you want to scan for. So I'll just hit enter. And there we are, it's going to go through the ports that, uh, uh, the, the default ports, which is pretty much all of them. Uh, and you can see that uh, it's going to specify the ports per second, uh, the packets per second, sorry, not the ports per second, which is currently set at 300. And there we are. So yeah, nothing new in terms of the results. These are all TCP ports. Now, if we wanted to move over to UDP ports, it's very simple. All we need to do is substitute the T for the U of course, right over here, and we hit enter. And I'm pretty sure if it's a Windows operating system, we'll have about uh, one port uh, in terms of one UDP port open. So let's just, uh, there we are, we can actually see it open right now. And it is running the NetBIOS service on UDP, which is excellent. So we know that this does work. All right, so you can go ahead and look at the statistics in regards to the ports that it's scanned for and the packets per second option, which allows you to either increase the speed of the scan or decrease it. It's also very, very good for fine tuning your scans if you're dealing with, uh, you know, an, a network that is 
uh, is uh, it, it really cannot handle the amount of traffic that you'll be bombing onto it. Uh, so really do be careful with that. As I've mentioned, this is one of the downfalls of Nmap. It's extremely heavy, but of course, uh, I'll also be making a video on Nmap discussing how to lower the network overhead when performing your scans. All right, so uh, that is how to perform a UDP scan. Of course, now when you talk about uh, scanning your entire network range, which I've specified, but I'll show you how to do it anyway. Uh, you have your, unico your, your uniscan, your unicorn scan, sorry. Uh, unicorn scan command and uh, you then specify the rate uh, which is your packets per second uh, in here I can specify up to 500 to, just to give it a, a quicker scan right over here now I then specify the uh, the mode which in my case I want to keep it to TCP and uh, you know I can also verbose the output and uh, I'll also use an immediate mode right over here then specify the network range 192.168.1.1 and 24 and I hit enter, all right? So it's gonna give us the verbose output and it's gonna begin the scan. And this is the interesting thing. It gives you the total amount of packets and uh, the estimated time for the scan to complete. So about three minutes. So again, you can, uh, depending on the size of your network, this is gonna take time. And it's all about fine tuning your scans to get what you want. And in terms of fine tuning, you can also specify the ports that you're looking for. Now I can, I can show you this in a second, but let's wait for this to give us a few results before we actually uh, get to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pause the video for a second. And once I get about one or two results, uh, we can then move on to actually specifying particular ports. All right. So I'll get back to you when I get a few results. All right. So it just took a few more seconds and I was able to get a few more results. So we have uh, my router, which currently has port 23 open. Uh, we have uh, one of my uh, the Windows computer, which is running right next to me, where we have the net bus ports open, and uh, that essentially the results that you'll be getting. Now, of course, the scan is not complete, and uh, the ideally we would like to save it to a file, and of course uh, log the results that you get. All right, now I'm just going to uh, cancel the scan, you know, control uh, C. So I'm just going to clear that out. And uh, when we talk about specifying particular ports, let's say you want to scan your entire network and the particular ports uh, to see if they're open. So we could scan uh, for a port, uh, for example, port 22, which uh, is essentially the SSH port. And uh, I only know of one computer on my network right now that has uh, the SSH port currently open. So to do that, you use your colon and the port. So this could be any port, really. It could be port 80, it could be port 21, FTP, SSH, whatever you want to, you, whatever you're looking for, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit enter. And of course, it's going to use the default interface. And the same rate is kept in terms of the packets per second. And there we are, we only have one host that's currently uh, running on that port and the scan completed as it went through the entire network and only found uh, the SSH port on one of these uh, devices and that is my router. All right, so that is how to specify a port. And of course you can do that if you want and you can change the ports to whatever you feel is necessary for your scan. Now, of course, when, when comparing Unicorn Scan to Nmap, it's very good to go through the uh, through the various scans that you can perform with uh, with Nmap, and some of them are the the SYN scans, the AX scans. So I'm just going to show you some of the uh, the commands that you can use to replicate these types of scans. And uh, one of these, uh, for the, for example, for uh, a SYN scan, is the following. So if you're performing a simple, uh, that is a wrong spelling. So Unicorn Unicorn scan. If so, if we are talking about performing a simple SYN scan, that is very easily denoted by the empty command. Of course, you can use the verbose and the immediate mode and specify your target. So 192.168.1.1. Let's try my router out. And there it's going to give us the results. We have port 22, port 80, and port 23 currently running. So, you know, SSH, uh, web server, and uh, we, we also have telnet running. All right. So there we are, the scan completed, and we got what we wanted. And essentially with a SYN scan, you're looking for the response with the SYN AX scan. So now we can also look at how to perform an AX scan. So let me just clear the terminal. We'll uh, just bring this up. So when performing an AX scan, we specify the following command. So again, if you remember to specify your protocols, in my case, I'm using TCP, and then we, we abbreviate it or uh, we, we conjoin it with the S and A commands for the ACK, uh, the ACK arguments. So we're gonna hit enter, of course, and, and this is a different type of scan uh, from the uh, previous one where we have the SYN scan. This is an ACK scan now. So we'll just wait for that to complete. And of course, you can specify the statistics that you want to use in regards uh you can specify the options that you want to use in regards to the amount of packets per second that you want to send now of course we do not get anything as this scan is irrele irrelevant to the setup that i have and the target that i have set up 
Uh, all right. So when we talk about performing uh, other individual or unique scans that Nmap does offer uniquely, for example, uh, like an, uh, an Xmas scan or a Christmas scan, whatever you want to call it, I'm just going to clear this out. So to do that, we essentially just need to uh, we need to understand what's going on. So we're specifying the protocol. Uh, so it's either TCP, UDP, whatever you want to specify. We then have the S command. And we're saying FPU right over here. Now, of course, you can go ahead and look at what those uh, those options arguments mean in the help menu. It's pretty self-explanatory what's going on here. So we can actually just take a look at that. So when you're talking about uh, essentially going through a, an XMS scan, or actually I'll make a video on that separately because I realize that I haven't covered Nmap really, really well. So I'll be making individual videos on all those types of scans. All right. So. Uh, we can hit enter on the target that we specify, which is currently my router, and it gives me the results right over here. So we haven't specified anything particular in regards to the amount of packets being sent per second. And there we are. We, we don't get anything much. And for those of you a bit confused with the type of scan I'm running in terms of the Axe scan or the Exma scan, don't worry. I'll be explaining this as this will require its own video. I really don't want to delve into other things. Now, the other interesting thing that people point out with Unicorn Scan is its use of modules or similar to what uh, Nmap has uh, or utilizes with the scripts. All right. Now, when we talk about Unicorn Scan modules, there are very, very few modules, but they all have their unique uh, function or they all perform a particular task. So I'll show you this right now. So the default directory for the modules is uh, if I'm let me just list the files in there first so that you can find this within your user, your library. Uh, and you, you then go into your unicorn scan. So if I can just list the files in here, unicorn scan, and that is under modules. All right. So if I list the files in here, you can see that we have various modules that perform uh, various, uh, various tasks or provide various uh, bits of functionality. You have HTTP and talk and you have your OS detect here, which can be used to detect operating systems. Uh, the, or detect the operating system that you're using. You have a UPnP. So very, very basic types of scripts that perform uh, very, very basic uh, task in terms of or provide very, very basic functionality. Now, of course, it's not something that I'm going to cover because I still prefer Nmap when it comes down to its scripts. It's uh, fantastic. But when it comes down to Unicorn Scan, as I said, this is uh, more applicable to the network penetration testers out there or the network administrators, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear this. If you want to use any of these modules, it's really very simple. All you need to do is you need to use the E command, which specifies the module that you'll be using uh, and the module name. All right. So, for example, if I wanted to use the OS detection module, I will simply say unicorn scan, uh, unicorn um, scan uh, as follows. And uh, we then specify the E command right over here. So E and OS detect, that is the name of the module, OS detect. And then we specify the uh, the protocol. So in this case, it's going to be uh, TCP. And I can then specify my target or, uh, you know, I can just run my router, which I doubt is going to yield any results because my router is running a custom Linux firmware, but it should give me the results. If it doesn't, uh, you need to just fine tune your results with the fingerprinting option available in the help menu. So you can definitely check that out. Now we'll be having additional uh, documentation on Unicorn Scan on my website. So you can check that out at uh, hsploit.com. That's where all, I'll be having all documentation for all my videos. So if you miss anything or didn't understand anything, you can check that out on the website. All right. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found value in it, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions, suggestions or any feedback, leave it in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace, guys.